This is the Wu-Ting 60HE, which I've been using for the last three weeks. It's an analog keyboard which uses magnetic hall effect switches, and this allows for some features which aren't possible with your average gaming keyboard. I pretty much exclusively play Counter-Strike, so in this video I'll talk about the features this keyboard has, how it has affected my gameplay as a CSGO player, and why there aren't many CSGO pros currently using it. There are two features in particular that I've found to have the most impact for me. The first is the adjustable actuation distance. So each switch can be set to actuate at any point between 4mm all the way down to 0.1mm, which is ridiculously sensitive. I'll talk more about how this affects gameplay later in the video. And the second feature is a mode that Wooting calls Rapid Trigger, which basically means that as soon as you begin releasing a switch, it's deactivated. So you don't need to release it past the actuation points again like you would with a normal keyboard. I've found these features to be most noticeable for counter strafing, which is a super important mechanic in CS. For comparison, a typical mechanical switch has an actuation distance of 2mm, so when you counter strafe, you need to release the key you're holding past the actuation point, which is typically going to be 2mm, and at the same time press the opposite key down 2mm. This is obviously still way snappier than a membrane keyboard, but even if you have a crazy reaction time, you're still limited to an extent by how quickly you can move the keys those 2mm. On a more high tier gaming keyboard like the Apex Pro, there is an improvement in how fast you can activate the switch initially, only needing to press it down 0.2mm. This means that you can begin to counter strafe 10 times quicker, but the key that you were holding still needs to be released to counter strafe effectively, and now it needs to be released 3.6 millimeters to be deactivated. For optimal counter strafing, you would need to be able to deactivate the key you are holding just as fast as you can activate the opposite key, and Rapid Trigger actually allows this to be possible. The distance that you need to release the switch to deactivate it can also be customized down to 0.15 millimeters or you can turn it off for specific keys that you don't want to accidentally let go of. For CSGO, I would recommend turning it off for E. This is what most people use to diffuse, and you definitely would not want to accidentally let go of that. Same with Shift and Control, which I use for walk and crouch, because I've noticed that I'll accidentally let go of these keys with my pinky and make sound when I don't want to, or I'll let go while I'm in a gunfight and start moving, which can be super irritating. I'll put my code for my keyboard layout in the description if you also have the 60HE and you want to try out my settings. I'm currently running WASD keys on 0.1mm actuation, and combining this with rapid trigger set at 0.15mm really feels insane. It's actually so sensitive that just resting your finger on a key can be enough to activate a switch, and releasing the slightest bit of pressure can deactivate it. Being able to set different actuation points for each switch is definitely a lifesaver. It's nice being able to have super fast movement keys, but still be able to use the keyboard without accidentally pressing Windows or Escape. That being said, I still had a hard time accidentally moving in more high pressure situations, and for the first few games I played, I was also having a tough time syncing my shots with my movement. It ended up taking me about two weeks to get adjusted to the speed of this keyboard, and that was playing every single day as well. I also enjoy playing KZ, which is a movement specific game mode in CS, and it requires very good synchronization between your mouse and keyboard. And using a keyboard this fast completely threw me off. I found I was moving my mouse half a strafe behind my keyboard because I wasn't used to how fast the switches actuate, and I've only started to find my rhythm in KZ after using the 60HE for 3 weeks. This could be one of the reasons why there aren't more pro players using this keyboard. On paper, it sounds like it should be the number one go-to for CS pros, but the only tier 1 pro who seems to be using it is Zaiwu. If I was a pro player with a busy schedule, playing tournaments constantly, I don't know if I would want to throw away my consistency for a week or two just to use a faster keyboard. Another factor might be that the advantage gained by using this keyboard, especially in tier 1 Counter-Strike, just isn't large enough for pros to switch off of keyboards that they're already comfortable using. At a high level, angles need to be cleared properly, with good crosshair placement and movement. 
We even have pre-aim maps to help learn every angle on every map. This means that oftentimes players will counter strafe directly into an angle, beginning to stop before they even know if someone is there or not. This doesn't rely very heavily on how fast or responsive your keyboard is, but rather how comfortable you are with the keyboard that you're using. In Tier 1 CS, they even have analysts and they study enemy teams to find where they like to play, so using a keyboard this fast might not really provide them with that large of an advantage over their opponents. But the same thing could be said about 360Hz monitors or 4KHz mice, which tons of pro players are using. The 60% layout of the keyboard could be preventing them from using this keyboard as well. Having no F row, arrow keys, or numpad might be a make or break for some players. Many pros use binds to buy their loadout at the start of every round, and some teams even use chat binds to track the economy of the enemy team. Although I don't use either of those binds, I do have many binds for other purposes, so I can see why they might not want to give up that extra keyboard space. Wooting does provide multiple solutions to this though. Within the Wutility website, you can remap the first layer as well as two function layers on the keyboard. And they also have a feature called Mod Tap, which allows you to use the same key for two different things depending on whether you tap or hold it. It is also possible that some pros are forced to use a different keyboard by their team's sponsors, which is nothing new in esports. Many have heard about how Twist's weird mouse grip was caused by Razor forcing him to use the Death Adder. I have a very overextended claw grip, um, kind of known for having a, a pretty weird grip. And the reason my mouse grip is like this is because in 2017, when I joined Team Liquid, uh, I was forced to switch from smaller mice to a bigger mouse because uh, Team Liquid had a Razor sponsorship at the time and I had to, move, I had to switch to Death Adder. This is just speculation though. I'm not sure if this is still a prevalent issue in CSGO. <clears throat> Logitech G715. <clears throat> Even with all these reasons why a pro might stay away from the Wooting 60HE, I still expect to see more pros begin using it over time because the benefits of analog switches are just too good to ignore, even in CS. No matter how good of a player you are, there will still be times when you get caught off guard or miss your first bullet, and that's when the Wooting's speed advantage shines through. Stopping when you see someone on your screen feels noticeably faster, and as long as your aim can keep up, you can hit some crazy shots in one taps. I found that it also makes it easier to deal with multiple enemies, because you can shoot, strafe, and then shoot it again so effortlessly. The Wooting also sounds pretty nice for a gaming keyboard, and it's super customizable, which is really cool. On mine, I switched out the stock springs for the 50 gram ones they sell on their website, and I also lubed all the switches and did the tape mod, which I think made it sound more poppy. I also swapped out the keycaps for some pudding keycaps made by Glorious, which I had laying around. The stock stabilizers on this keyboard are one of the most impressive parts in my opinion. There's absolutely zero rattle on the spacebar or any of the other stabilized keys. Here's a sound test, as well as a completely unfair comparison between the Wooting and my last keyboard, a Logitech G Pro keyboard with blue clicky switches.
As I'm sure you can tell, the G Pro doesn't even come close, clicky switches aside. If you go back and watch pretty much any of my old videos, you'll probably be able to hear that keyboard in the background. It's almost obnoxious how loud and rattly it is, especially when I'm playing at night. So to recap, the Wuting 60HE is a keyboard that provides features no other keyboard has in 2023. It's super fast, it's customizable, and it sounds good. Is it going to instantly make you a better player? No. In fact, in my experience it'll make you a worse player for the first week or two that you use it. But does it raise the skill ceiling of what's possible in Counter-Strike? I definitely think it does, and if you just want the best gaming keyboard currently on the market, this is the one to get. Nothing really compares at this point. So if you start seeing some of your favorite pro players switching to the Wu-Ting 60HE, now you know why. If you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate if you would like it, and subscribe if you want to see CS gameplay with this keyboard in the future. Thanks for watching, and good luck in your next match! They're going around. They're in. They're in.